we give you glory this morning. God, we thank you for all that you're doing in the lives of those that are here and present today. God, we declare that you're on the move in our lives. God, we ask that you, the Holy Spirit, will be here in our presence right now. We know you are. We know you are. So right now, we declare that you have free reign. And we declare that we belong to you, that our generation belongs to you, our families belong to you. This community in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, this area belongs to you. We establish your presence in all of the surrounding areas where we work, not at the White House, on Capitol Hill, at the Pentagon, got all through the mall areas, all the tourists come. We just establish your presence now. We pray, God, that miracles will happen in our midst. God, we know that there are individuals here who are coming, believing for a miracle this morning. We declare by our faith as we join together that we, we declare you are indeed, according to your, your word, in the midst of us. So we pray for that unique presence that causes miracles to take place. God, heal hearts and heal minds and encourage people and take people out of depression and out of all the concerns and having our focus on otherly things. God, we place our focus on you now. God, fill this atmosphere right now with who you are. Saturate us. God, meet every need in this place, we pray. Touch every church that is declaring that Jesus is Savior and Lord, our risen Savior. All through our, the United States of America, all through the nations of the globe, because we, we know that the nations are as a drop in the bucket to you. God, that you are on the move in each one of these nations. God, we, touch, we pray right now, touching every missionary by our prayers to encourage every missionary all over the globe. God, we declare that those nations that are not now open to the gospel will become open in Jesus' name. Nations that right now look like they're going to be closed to the gospel where we've had the ability to come in before. We just declare that the doors are going to remain open in Jesus' name. The underground church is being encouraged right now that you're protecting those that are in prison for their faith. God, we pray for, for liberty of the gospel in these last days. God, if indeed these are the last days, we pray, God, for what must happen, and that is that everybody must hear. Everybody must hear. So, Father, we pray that the gospel will indeed go across the globe. God, we praise you and we honor you. Place your hand upon us right now. Give us expectation that something of the kingdom is going to happen this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said a triumphant. Yes. Amen. You may be seated. Well, uh, we got the text message this morning that there was a big spider over the stage. I, you know, my first thought was, well, just kill it. Have the bravery to knock it out and get it out of here. Nobody likes to do it, but we got to do it. And uh, we didn't really know what we were dealing with fully. I feel kind of like Will Ferrell in that movie. I didn't see the movie. All I know is the commercial where the Tyrannosaurus Rex is right behind him with the big teeth and drooling, and, and all of a sudden he says, it, it, it's right behind me, isn't it? And I feel kind of that way, you know, Lisa's praying that arms will envelop. I'm hoping she's talking about God and not whatever this thing is. But, uh, but at any rate, I, I encourage you to, to, uh, to recognize that God is, is in our midst and that God wants to touch you this morning. You know, it's interesting. There are moments in which I think we go past them quickly, but I wonder if history would be changed if those moments were a little different. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I was watching, um, I think it was two nights ago, I was watching the uh, TV series of the show, uh, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, I think is the name of it. Has anybody seen that show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? And I was watching it, and, and I went in, I, I was looking forward to a baked potato. I, I hadn't had a baked potato in a long time, and Lisa had cut the ends off of the potato, and, and I put it on a plate, put it in the microwave, and it was cooking for a rather long time, I felt, but... Uh, I would go in and out, you know, preparing the butter, the uh, sour cream and everything while I was going in to see if I was smarter than a fifth grader. And I went in to get my potato and I was standing there preparing everything and I was right in front of the microwave, maybe two feet in front of it. And all of a sudden I thought, well, how much time is left? It said five minutes and 14 seconds. I thought I have, I have more time to go see how this person's doing uh, and, you know, what's going on on this show. So I walked into the living room of our home 
And about, I would say, maybe 15 to 20 seconds later, this loud bam happened. And I look over, and the microwave door is now open, about a third of the way open. And I'm walking over there to see what, what happened. And the potato is still in there. The potato looks fine. But the plate is in smithereens. And so is the glass plate underneath it that circulates. It's about this thick. It sent pieces 10 feet away, and including in directions that I don't even know how they got there. And, and yesterday, I don't know whether it was Lisa or Sydney that found, was it Sydney? That a piece of the plate was in, a, uh, was in an apple that was, in, that was in a basket a couple of feet away and was stuck in the apple. Now, I was thinking to myself, what would have happened if I had been standing there at that moment? All of that would have gone right into the back of my head. Uh, and, and the blast was, I mean, it was not your normal pop sound that you get sometimes in the microwave. This was a major blast. So who knows what would have happened? We can just move on from moments like that, but I believe God protected me there. And there was a piece of plate that was this big that, like I say, was 10 feet ahead, straight ahead. That would have been meant for me. So uh, spider or no spider, I know who my God is. I know he's on the move. Amen. Amen. Uh, I read something that Leonard Sweet wrote. It was about uh, Lance Armstrong. I want to read this to you. It's interesting. Uh, Lance Armstrong going for his eighth Tour de France. Uh, his heart is nearly one-third larger than that of the average man. At resting, it beats an average of 32 times per minute. During peak performance, 200 times. He burns up about 6,500 calories every day for three weeks while in the race. One of the stages of the race is 120 miles long that day. He will burn 10,000 calories. You and I burn 3,500. That's on a good day. His lungs can take in twice the oxygen. His body fat level is 4%. Yours is 16. Who's he talking to here? Uh, <laughs> he has a weird femur bone. It's longer than the average man's. Uh, that gives him more torque when pedaling his bicycle for 2,000 miles through the French mountains. This year, he is older than most of the other competitors, yet it is as if he was built to ride. And by the way, I think this was in January, and now he's saying that he's going to come back. He got third place uh, at his age. Amazing. And he's going to come back, he says, in 2010. Looking at this man is uh, unbelievable. It's unbelievable that cancer struck him in September 1996. He went through brain surgery and later chemotherapy, so aggressive that it destroyed some of his uh, muscle structure, burned parts of his skin, and gave him permanent kidney da uh, damage. And yet the best bicyclists in the world have changed.